Welcome back, Nathan, to the Traders Podcast. Well, thank you. The Comic Book Club, where we read a different trade paperback every single week. I'm Daniel, you're Nathan. We're brothers, we read comics. Yes, yes, we are brothers. So glad, so glad to be podcasting. Yeah. This is, this is like my therapy, Nathan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Except in therapy, you, you know somebody's listening, you know? I'm not listening to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're getting married. I am, yeah. At the time this comes out, it's like tomorrow? It, it'll be tomorrow. At, by Holy the time shit. this is out and you're awake, we'll be probably around the rehearsal. God, you you're know? so stressful to deal with right now. You're, you're a groomzilla. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You can't, can't, can't control me. Yeah. And so uh, Everything has to be perfect. Nathan. That's why if, if you clicked on this episode and you're like, if you did, you know, I, I wouldn't click on Deadpool gets married or whatever this is called. I'd want to see what it was about. But you if know? you're wondering why. <laughs> we decided this in particular, not the more famous superhero ones. Um, but oh, one yeah. that you maybe didn't know about. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. So, and it was like the shortest one. So. Yeah. That's also good. And. Uh, but before but we even get there, before we, we find out who Deadpool gets married to. We have time codes. You can, they're in the description. You can yeah. jump to whatever part you want. If you want to jump to the wedding. It'll be somewhere in the middle, but yeah, Daniel's wedding. I'll, I'll We're recording you. it. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be included in this episode. And I'll have it edited the day before. Yeah, and um, we also got back matter matters. We have the pull list, the stuff we've been reading and watching, including Ant Man, including Ant Man and the Wasp, uh, Quant and uh, Quantum Mania, and then the the news. I just realized Quantum Mania has Ant in the title. Y- yep, yep, it's uh. Hold on. What, Why don't they call it Quantumania? <laughs> Quant, Quantmania. Quantmania. And the Waspia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very precisely chosen to see who who knows. Wow. I didn't notice this until now. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. But we uh, start with the news. Let's get to it then. Nathan. What's up? Uh, for for some reason, you know the the movie studios is not making a sequel to the 2018 Hellboy movie. That sucks. Well, yeah, yeah they're doing a new one. They're rebooting it again. Sweet third reboot. How, <laughs> how many universes do you know gets a third reboot? A third reboot? <laughs> not many. Not many. Yeah. So, I guess like <clears throat> how many times has the Crow been rebooted? Never. It's just the one. Is it? Just, I thought there was multiple Crow movies incorrect okay well because uh i like that they keep swinging with hellboy you yeah, know brandon lee died on set of the first one so he, uh they never made a second one. Oh, okay a reboot would make sense which he died I, on set yeah it was a That's gun, metal. Ma- gun prop malfunction thing oh no yeah wow um we should that, read the crow <laughs> that's when, what people don't know because i think they are working on a reboot maybe jason momoa is in it i don't remember right but uh, we'll read it when that comes around. Is that a comic or just a movie? That's a comic. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, working title for the Hellboy movie is The Crooked Man, which is a specific arc in Hellboy comics, which yeah, is like, cool. It's like the fifth trade or something. Something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I've i only read like the first hardcover of Hellboy, which is not, I don't think, the good stuff yet. Yeah. Probably has needs to flourish it's still very good but yeah so i I don't think i've read the crooked man but that's pretty pretty exciting i'm glad that movie studios aren't like we're never doing this again after the david harbour one yeah although i do like that one and you have an expansive collection of those dvds in particular i buy every single copy i find (laughs) which is not a lot (laughs) because it's funny to me and also (laughs) i i feel like people shouldn't watch it because they won't, they won't get it, Nathan. They won't. Only Be, Daniel gets it. Because that that movie is it's, secretly perfect. It's <laughs> there's I don't nothing, know about perfect, but it's better. If Nathan, you, know. you just don't like it because you don't understand it. I didn't say I don't like it. In reality, it's <laughs> very accurate yeah that's why i do like it yeah it's a ton of fun i think it falls apart at the end when there's that's the best part nathan when there's a a guy that gets puked out of someone's mouth or whatever they explain it perfectly they do i just don't like it i'm not confused about anything but i'm glad they're doing more i'm excited for that hellboy game that's coming out that'll that'll be cool definitely got a couple comic books that got announced today some i'm really excited about there's going to be a star wars halloween special called tales from the death star Ooh. Uh, published by Dark Horse, which is interesting. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know how that works. Like the licensing one. I know that Star Wars has been thrown around a bunch of places. But now Disney owned it. You think it'd be a Marvel book, but I think doesn't Dark Horse have the adventures like the Star Wars adventures? Oh, maybe. So, so that's, that sounds pretty cool. Peacemaker tries hard. That's a DC black label series written by Carl, Kyle Starks, drawn by Steve Pugh and colored by Jordi Belair. That's coming out. Mm-hmm. I think that one might be pretty fun. He's holding, he's holding a dog. What is this called? A French, Frenchie? It's a French bulldog. French bulldog. He's holding one of those. Where's Eagly? I don't know where Eagly is, Daniel. Oh my God. Maybe we'll find out. He turned into a French bulldog. Uh, did we know, we knew about Essex County, right? Y- yep. But we did not know when it, that it came out on March 19th. On everyone's favorite network. C- yeah. CBC. <laughs> Which is not in America. Oh, it's not? No. Hmm. What do we have? CBS? Yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, uh, that, that's a perfect opportunity for our first sponsor, Nathan. What was what it called? Express VPN. Express VPN, <laughs> everybody. We're, we're not sponsored, but that seems like the only way to watch it. Okay. Uh, until it eventually comes to streaming. I don't know. Nathan, not really news, kind of news. They, Tom Taylor and Bruno Redondo, mm-hmm. uh, and show released like the cover for Nightwing 104. Did you see that? Oh yeah, the one that you sent me. It's the meme. Yeah, it's the super hot fire <laughs> <laughs> meme or Gl- the video. Glasses jacket shirt. Call me <laughs> glasses jacket shirt man. <laughs> <laughs> I love that video. Broke up with Max girl. Here's the number. Psych. <laughs> That's the wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great cover. That it, dude's always do, doing good with his covers. Just, it, if just he's like, like the concept, I'm like, this is genius. It really is because like even like the pose that he has for like Nightwing where he's like leaning back into his boys for dropping super hot fire. Yeah. Genius. It is genius. And I feel like he's always good with covers. And even if he doesn't have an idea of something that like like twist the medium or whatever he's just like i'll just make this meme yeah <laughs> and, it, and it's still just as fun <laughs> exactly you know big big hot news got dumped today <laughs> oh man I, I saw no dumps today you saw no dumps today yeah jonathan hickman and brian hitch have you not heard this news no are releasing in june of 2023 it's the trend as this year the transformation of the marvel universe begins oh my goodness ultimate invasion they're bringing back the ultimate universe <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. With Brian Hitch, the guy that did the ultimates and it's Jonathan right. Hickman. That's oh, so fucking cool. My head's going to hurt so bad. It's going to hurt so bad. Uh, they released uh, like a double page spread that he did. looks really good. It's Mr. Fantastic doing a big stretch or whatever. Look at his cheeks. Dude. His cheeks are, his cheeks are, he stretched them out to be big. Damn. Super, super cool. And for the promo image, it looks like the thinker's going to get involved because he's like one of the best parts of the Ultimate Universe. Didn't the Ultimate Universe and the 616 Universe like merge? Yes, Daniel. It's unmerging now? That happened in the Secret Wars that Jonathan Hickman did, I think. Yeah, he's undoing it now? Uh, I think, uh, you know what? Maybe they were just like stuck underground. He's like, you know what? Surprise. (laughs) Fuck all that. Yeah, he's like, you know what? (laughs) We'll do it again. (laughs) See if I care. I don't care. So that's pretty cool. Damn, that's crazy. I just like that they got Brian Hitch to do it as well. Yeah. I think he'll be pretty cool on it. I like that he's like available to do all these like crazy things. I know. You know? He's like, yeah, I'll do that. That's like, cool. What, after one crazy thing happens, he's he signed up to another crazy thing, you know? What was, guy, the, what was the crazy thing before? I don't like Venom. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a big no, crazy there, thing. There's huh? something else. He was doing Venom, but I don't know what it was before that. Anyway. Daniel, Suicide Squad, colon, Kill Arkham Asylum. It's the official five-issue prequel to the highly anticipated video game from Warner Bros. Games Rocksteady. Uh, There's going to be a prequel comic. I was also like, oh, but friend of the show, John Lehman, is writing this book. Oh. With Jesus Hervas, uh, okay. who's drawing. I don't know who that is, but how did Amanda Waller recruit the Suicide Squad to take, out, take on the Justice League? Find out in this and then also more context it's a prequel comic book set in the game's continuity and will feature harley quinn deadshot captain boomerang king shark and of course amanda waller who just took control of arkham asylum as part of her latest recruitment drive we're going to see some of the justice league start to get controlled by whatever they're getting controlled by that's cool so pretty cool yeah actually prequel comic books for video games can be good pretty sick i think because uh there's the gotham knights one that looks pretty good the the gotham you know the the arkham knight 
uh, video yeah. game. Yeah. They had an Origins comic for that. And that was yeah. actually really fucking sick. Oh, dude, that could be a whole week <laughs> or a, a, a whole month of prequel comic books to things that aren't comic books. Yeah. <laughs> and we decide if they're good. I think I still have it, actually. I don't know. I you remember bought it? I bought it. It was coming out. I'm like, oh, this game's sick. And oh, I, for Arkham. There was like an Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight, yeah. Arkham Knight, yeah. There's Arkham Knight and there's Arkham Knight Origins. Yeah. And Origins is really sick. Arkham Knight was like, meh, but... The game? The, the, there was like a, a series for Arkham Knight. I can't, it was like kind of... During Arkham Knight? During game, Arkham Knight, but yeah. But the prequel comic is that good. That was before. Okay, that that's was sick. That one's fire. Yeah, okay. yeah. Really good artwork on that too. Very cool. Uh, Grant Morrison and Liam Sharp are coming back together again in... For more Green Lantern? From not more Green Lantern, it's called Eden's End. Mm. Uh, we knew that th- they were working together at some... Is this in a big some two capacity. Thing? Uh, no, it's going to be released under the Xana Doom Presents banner, named after Morrison's Substack newsletter. So it'll probably be a Substack thing first, then in print. Uh-huh. I'm there day one when it's in print, but... <laughs> uh, you know what I completely forgot about? Um, with Substack is that Jeff Lemire had one and oh, he, and he had probably like pretty good. The, the last days of Black Hammer that he was releasing on that Oh, and the trade for that came out today whoa cool yeah. is that the end so the so Black Hammer is like the character who dies in like the first issue oh is it just that Black Hammer like the dad Black Hammer okay so he's so not it's, ending it's the a prequel Black Hammer comic. series no 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 oh okay that's good so not the end of the of all of black hammer <laughs> yeah. just the end of black hammer okay you know? good the one guy that the guy that it's the a prequel series comic it's it's very far from the the end you okay know? very cool the furthest from the end you can get because <laughs> it's before it even starts yeah yeah <laughs> got it how could you end at the beginning Nathan? it's impossible Dan, let's get into the book that we read this week yes it's called deadpool gets married it's called deadpool in this trade specifically is, Which is, the, is the fifth volume of the Jerry Duggan run, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's called The Wedding of Deadpool, and it's not all wedding issues, yeah, it turns I'm out. very confused by this. It's just the issues that came out around that time. Not only is it the <clears throat> issues that came out around that time, they're also out of order. Which is even more confusing. It, it I goes... think they had to have the wedding ones first Which is for it to fine. make sense, Yeah, and then they played out the rest. It goes... I don't even know what issue it, this it is. Goes, there's the Wedding of Deadpool issue. And then there's issue 27. Yep. And then there's issue 26, then 28. And then the annual. And then the annual. <laughs> Which is unreal. Which is how I read comics. You know? <laughs> yeah, typically. So I, it's probably like they do like five issues, you know, a trade or whatever. Mm-hmm. And this one, it just didn't work out that way. Yeah. So yeah, writers Jerry Duggan, Brian Posen. Mike Hawthorne, Scott Colbush on art, Vic Sta- Val Staples, not Vic Staples, that's a rapper, and no, Jody he, Belair on colors. He does not color. Vic he Staples. does not color. I saw him in a show, though. That was weird. And then lots of lots of stuff. Oh, and Deadpool Animal Annual is Ben Acker and Ben Blacker. Oh, my God. It's the Acker Blacker guys? And Evan Doc Shaner as the artist. Wait, really? Yeah, on the annual. That Did, makes so much sense. I know. I went back and I was like, oh, it's Doc Shaner. Because I was like, I really like this artwork. Dude, it looks no wonder so good. I like that one so much. <laughs> Everything up to that point, I was like, this is okay, I guess. This is so random. <laughs> I, yeah. Veronica Gandini has, on colors. Wow. And then a, there's a Trad Moore color. Uh, our cover what did ben acker and ben blacker do again uh they did deadpool versus gambit nathan is that what it was they did other things but i think that's where it mean you know them from i think that is because wow, it's such i don't a even good, remember that series it's such a good like <laughs> name i know and I'm, I'm glad that they're together yeah because i think Married. they write everything together they, as they should they never separate if someone says ben acker so uh, someone else is like best Who? believe ben blacker is around the corner <laughs> He, he he comes in <laughs> wait <laughs> like he's bloody mary yeah but no if someone just says like ben black or somebody else they're like who and the, it's like from from ben acker and ben blacker and they're like oh okay i gotcha i've yeah, heard of them bigly but anyway that's I imagine. let's get into it yeah so it starts out with like a recap page thing or at least a little introduction and it has like the like cute like deadpool art that i feel like i see everywhere like sophia has a shirt of from this artist she doesn't even know what artist it is. she does i didn't even know what artist <laughs> was but apparently it's irene y lee uh mm-hmm. who does like little deadpool art like cute like little i think it's called like chibi it, uh, like in the style of like a chibi okay 
and I I never realized that it was like her specifically. So I thought that was kind of cool. You, let's talk about this this okay. wraparound cover, Nathan. Yes, it is. It broke a record, I think. There's 236 characters, which seems like a lie. That's it. like that's I like know as that, many people as going to be at your wedding. <laughs> oh my god! And you couldn't name everybody. <laughs> no, absolutely not. At your wedding, probably. I I know for a fact I will not. <laughs> so if we had everyone in one big picture and you were supposed to like go down and identify every single one, you'd probably get more right in this picture. If we're getting than married in like wedding. a stadium or something, yeah, <laughs> like they seemingly are. Like this, I don't know. This just doesn't seem like two hundred, maybe eight hundred. No, like it, I know they count it out, in, but it's, in the back matter, they number every single person in in the numbers. They correlate like a character to each one. Dude, Rolk is in this. Yeah, Rolk is in it. Yondu's in it. Man thing. There's people I've never heard of as well. Like Snowbird, Moon Boy. Who's Moon Boy? I know Moon Girl. Yo, Drax got some shitty seats. What the fuck? Yeah, I feel like I. I wonder. Why is Giant Man big in this? I like he's taking up like three seats. Yeah, you. Uh, why is Lockjaw here? Because <laughs> he's also taking up like three seats. So it's just crazy. I like that Owatu is there. Like you could watch from the moon, you know, right? But you know, he he had to be there. They don't they don't have free food on the moon or an open bar. You know, <laughs> you're totally right about that. Wait, who's the second person in the um, the bridesmaids next to Domino and Lady Deadpool? Is that Mary Jane? Yeah. Okay. So that's number 208. That's Siren. Who the fuck is that? X-Men. Ah. And Squirrel Girl first. Wait, who, what's the dog name? 232. And that is Deadpool Dog. Oh, good good name. <laughs> is that Dogpool? What the fuck? <laughs> no, you'd think it would be. Especially since they have Panda Pool. That got pretty popular. Yeah. I have a pop of Panda Pool. When did that happen? Panda Pool? That was in Deadpool versus Deadpool. Oh, okay, gotcha. Where Deadpool fights all of his multiverse. Uh, <laughs> they love variants. doing a Deadpool versus. <laughs> That's actually like probably like the best one. Yeah, um, it definitely is. But we did you read that. that one? Yeah, it's okay. like one of the first comics I've like ever read. Deadpool versus Deadpool? No, no, no. Deadpool versus the Marvel Universe, or Deadpool uh, kills the Marvel Universe. Oh, whatever yeah, that yeah. One was. yeah. No, I'm talking about Deadpool versus Deadpool. That one's really good. Oh, I don't think I have read that one then. Okay, because you would you would have remembered Panda Pool. Yeah. Because he's, he's very iconic. The most iconic. <laughs> the most iconic Deadpool variant. Anyway, let's move on. Daniel, Deadpool's getting married to a lady, a nice lady named Shikla. Yeah. Who is a demon but can turn into a nice goth girlfriend. Who doesn't mm. want that? Yeah. And he's all set for his wedding, but he needs a minister to marry them. Is that what they're called? Uh, efficient efficient to marry them and so he's like wolverine can you do that kind of thing and he's kind of like asking people and then he finds kurt wagner aka nightcrawler yeah which i love great idea i love the the shikla design most mostly because good for deadpool she's got cuffs on on each uh wrist and there's a cape that connects them behind her Mm-hmm. but they're only it's only connected to the wrists so she goes like that she looks like a bat or something yeah which i was like that's some pretty high fashion stuff you yeah, know it doesn't even like connect to like her back or no anything. it doesn't it's connect just, to any part of her body it's just the like wrist bracelet things that she has it's just like a blankie to go it, <laughs> it's kind of cool honestly <laughs> yeah no it definitely works for her character yeah and then she turns into a monster and i don't yeah which is pretty cool as well pretty hot uh i love seeing nightcrawler and stuff yeah and i just love his whole uh journey with like religion i'm not even like a religious guy necessarily myself but for some reason like nightcrawler of all characters is like a religious guy and i think that's really interesting uh he's got a couple of good series about that okay oh, well, there's, a, there's a little abbey road <laughs> yeah there's like, an abbey uh, road reference yeah reference so wait who's his who's his groomsman so he's got wolverine dr strange he's got cap He's got Cap, who's in a blue suit. Seems like, seems a little weird. Is that Cable? Yeah, it's definitely Cable. That's Cable. And then uh, his buddy from S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Pretty cool. While in the reception, it rains, but then Thor's like, oh, sorry, it was me. And it stops. And then they have like the wedding party and everything seems all good and fun. But then there's an evil man from the group Ultimatum who's wanting revenge on Deadpool. 
And we never see that man again, at least not in this trade. So I don't know why that's there. Yep. But he didn't like things. ruin the wedding or anything. No, he, he didn't. He's just like, he's just, he's brooding. just around. He's brooding in the different location. A couple things. I like seeing Uatu <laughs> in like this issue. Did you, did you notice that? I think I did. I can't remember where he was. So he was in like the reception part. And it's when Shikla walks out and he's like right there. Oh, he's like way he, in the back. He's okay. like on the moon or whatever, you know? Yeah. He's like force projecting himself there. Um, that's pretty cool. Do you know Bob from Hydra? Is he the one with like the beard and the skirt? No. And the kilt? No. He's a Hydra man that Deadpool's good friends with. Oh. And uh, he, he makes an appearance here as well. He's vital to Deadpool lore. Is he the one with like the male pattern baldness? No, he's he's got his, his Hydra hat on. Also, same panel. Oh. I guess he took Squirrel Girl as a plus one, which is good for him. She's got the very upsetting makeup. Oh, she's got like the, the OG Squirrel Girl makeup. Yeah, which I think is very upsetting. Yeah, look at her calves, dude. They're all hairy. Oh, gross. <laughs> I didn't even notice. That's bizarre. Oh, man. Not a lot to unpack there in that yeah, panel. <laughs> there, there, there is a lot. A lot that you didn't notice, a lot that I didn't notice. Yeah. I got. I like that he got married without the mask. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, you really gotta be yourself. You exactly, know? which is cool. Are you Daniel a, f- a fan of Deadpool mask with like the little 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 tail thing on the back, uh, or just sh- the little bunch? The little yeah. I think. You know, I don't care, but I think it's just always there to where I got used to it. No, there's a couple. There's a couple panels where it's not there. Yeah, with when we get to like the next issue or whatever that is. Yeah, because it it like makes sense, you know, why it's there. It just would happen sometimes yeah. if it's not this perfect form fitting mask. Yeah, but he always has it. You know, I like I like it when it's there. You like it? I do like it when it's you there. You think it's cool? I it's not like I like it. I just dislike it when it's not there. He doesn't have it in the movie, does he? Uh, he no, he doesn't. Yeah, it's like I don't specifically think so. like which is why those movies are bad. <laughs> <laughs> he could have it. I don't know. Also, this villain guy, he definitely looks like Batman just without ears. So, he looks like a Batman that'd be in like a Mark Miller book or something. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, he does. That that's also like a That's just Nemesis, but like yeah. with a black cowl instead. Oh, dude, that the the movie Deadpool's got the little the little the little boop. Oh, yeah. Then good movie. Good movie. <laughs> Gotta have the boop. All right, Daniel. Next issue. 27. This is a weird issue uh, because it's an anthology issue. And like the biggest anthology issue like it's ever. It's ginormous. And there's... It's like 100 pages. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 6, 12. 12 different uh, teams. So when I went to go write this down for like my notes, I went like left and then down <laughs> it's not that order <laughs> no, i don't know i don't know why i didn't think oh left to right you yeah. know no it's um, not that order so i really all. fucked up my notes i had to rearrange them and stuff yeah so there's some good ones in here some bad ones i'm just gonna keep it pretty general but basically the idea it, it opens up with the concept of the issue which is deadpool at his bachelor party and he's, he's explaining to captain american wolverine all the times he's been married before because that was not previously known and that sort of opens up to just the anthology with all the different teams, which is when Deadpool has gotten married. Did you see Hitmonkey? I did see Hitmonkey. He's in this twice. He is. Yeah, he's in that first panel. I didn't notice that. But I noticed him in the second time, which is cool. Okay. When the ballerinas come down, whatever whatever that's about. So they're on the helicarrier. Is that where his bachelor party that's is? That's where the bachelor party is. Oh, okay. That's, that's awesome. And they were acting like they are being attacked by some chopper coming in. But it's actually just strippers coming down on ropes yeah which is genius <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome it's like when people get kidnapped for their bachelor party or whatever and they're like what the fuck's going on yeah, but yeah. this time they're just getting raided but it's strippers and then we're gonna recreate this in vegas <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're gonna, i'm taking you to a hell carrier <laughs> yeah <laughs> so this first one's called shit faced in vegas it's so, basically deadpool and miss marvel stop some face hugger aliens uh, in Vegas, and then they go out for a drink, they get drunk, and then they almost get married by a guy dressed as Spider-Man, but she doesn't, ultimately. There's, but he counts it. There's like an editor's note here that I'm not sure is real or not, but it's like, this story was drawn for Deadpool Annual 17 in 1982, but the, it was shelved when the editor saw the art, deeming the alien designs inappropriate. We present the story now in censored form. Okay. And so these little face huggers, I just assume look like a bunch of dicks. And so they censored them out with like a bunch of like 
I black bars. Don't are. think that's true because the art is by Scott Koblish. Yeah, he was there. <laughs> He's been doing art for a long time. It has he? No, no, no. Uh, so it's probably fake. Because it's probably it, fake because it's really this is good a art. good story. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like it a lot. But it's drawn in the style to where it's old, so it does kind of sell you on that. I do like all the censored like blocks that they do, and get, they get pretty creative with it. Yeah, like when there's a bunch of them, they spell out censored across all of the different ones, but each censor has a different letter. That's pretty fun. Or like all the rest of them are like ew, yuck, or like nothing here. How do you feel about Deadpool with a cape? Uh, I don't like it. Looks so kind of cool. It looks like he should be like Zoro or something. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> because he's got the sword and whatnot. What about the, the DP logo that he has on his chest? As you can see here. Looks like it should be the Daredevil logo. It should which, be. Which maybe that's what he's going for. <laughs> <laughs> pre- but pretty fun. Pretty cool. I really enjoyed just like the coloring of this. It feels very like flat. And, but then they've also like distorted the colors a little bit to make it seem like it's super old. Yeah, they did that a couple times. Which is really, really good. And I think really effective. Also, I like this Spider-Man like officiant person. And it's just like this big dude. And like, like the eyes are cut out. because So he can see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's pretty fun. So pretty good one. So he counts it. So he's been married to Miss Marvel. The second one. With this hand, I I the wed is what it's called. It's but in my vows. It's it's basically a mutant named Vanessa that got shot while they were on a mission, and then he saved her with healing factor blood, or at least he thought. Because this issue, he's married to like a sock puppet that looks like Vanessa, and he takes the sock puppet on adventures, and then while on the adventure, an adventure, the sock puppet gets burnt. And then he mourns with chimichangas. He goes like a chimichanga truck. Maybe this is the origin of him loving chimichangas because he didn't know what it was at the time. Mm -hmm. And then twist Daniel, the person serving him chimichangas is Vanessa who can shapeshift, I guess. Yes. Uh, So this this guy has a lot going on with it. Yeah. Very confusing. Yeah. (laughs) I think it's funny that he's just like on the couch and the sock puppets just like draped over like the couch and he's just like still having a good old time. Yeah. You know what? We have the opportunity to judge different Deadpool designs, more specifically his scars. This one, it looks like he's like a lizard that's like shedding his skin. I think this one's good. I like it when there's more, more like. This is like a bit much to it, me. Yeah, I guess so. It The wounds do look scaly just because of the way that he draws it. He like draws like squares, like square scars, basically. Yeah. So I guess I, I don't think it would be my favorite. I don't know why he has yellow eyes. You know, you'd think he'd just have his normal eyes if he's not in the mask, but right. I do like the Deadpool, like normal suit design. I think that one's really strong. He, he does a good job drawing, drawing this. Mm-hmm. So this, this one's drawn by Scott Hepburn. Right. Okay. Next one. Continuity, spontaneity. This good one's name. pretty good. Yeah. Deadpool gets the seventh infinity gem, which is the continuity gem. And he uses it to get married to a mutant named Genosha in Vegas. But then she gets shot and he's like, oh, oh, well. and that's pretty much what happens but i'd like the idea of the continuity gem i think that's really funny and the whole time he's like talking to the editors with like the editor's notes and they're like super scared that he's gonna just like fuck up continuity in the marvel universe yeah so i think a lot of those jokes were were pretty good this one next one's fun it's the niagara bride yeah so this one took me a little bit to understand but basically deadpool marries a girl and he can't remember her name so he's just trying to like recall what it was and Wolverine gets involved for some reason, trying to to kill him. Do you do you know why he's there? So it seems like he's like a normal dude, not Deadpool. And then he had like a cloaking machine, and it turns out that he's actually Deadpool, right? And yeah. it reveals that. I don't know why they get involved now, but I think they just assume that he's trying to hijack the wedding or whatever. And so he steals the bride. (laughs) And so they they bring out Wolverine. They're like, you need to stop this man from wedding crashing. Yeah. And so he steals the bride. She gets knocked out. They get into this like barrel boat thing on Niagara Falls. And they end up falling to their death. Mm -hmm. He obviously has his healing factor and regenerates. Right. But it turned out that she had been sick and did not want to continue living on and be remembered as you know, sick or whatever. Someone with cancer. Someone I with believe cancer. it was cancer. Yeah. And so she had hired Deadpool for this like hit and make it look like she was kidnapped in order for like insurance to pay out and things like that. Okay. So maybe Wolverine found out that Deadpool was potentially going to be here to harm this woman. Yeah. Because of insurance fraud. He yeah. works for the insurance companies, Nathan. Yeah. Wolverine. Yes, he does. 
<laughs> you know, those, they he's, have deep pockets, Daniel. He's a, he's a private investigator. It wouldn't surprise me if they, if the insurance companies are in control of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because there's a lot of insurance, property insurance that would happen mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. this world. But yeah, this one's kind of interesting because uh, he gets hired to do this thing. And because she gets killed in this way, Matt Murdock steps in and gives her family like a big um, settlement. Yeah. And so they're able to like live comfortably. Yeah. So now she gets the settlement and the insurance, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And so her family's good now. And then what was paid to Deadpool, he just ends up donating. Right. So I thought that was kind of nice. Yeah. It was very sweet stuff. And yeah. she was like passed out the whole time. So she didn't experience any pain. Yeah. Very interesting one. This one's called Fanged. Didn't really get this one too much, but I got the gist. So Deadpool's like in the Arctic or something. He's dragging a body around uh in the snow it's the body of his wife penny who had just died because a villain named the wizard trapped her in a submarine that then uh she drowned in and then it's revealed that it's not his wife and it's just all in his head and the wizard has a backup teleporter that he can use to go home yeah but then it turns out the body that he's dragging is the wizard yeah so he so he made up penny completely or penny is dead um, but he can use the wizard's backup teleporter, which he thought he used when he was trying to save Penny, but maybe he hasn't used it yet. It's not very clear. There's also a talking wolf. I don't really know this one much. Yeah. Because he's hallucinating maybe. Yeah. And Christopher <laughs> Priest did it. That's how. Oh, dude, that makes so much sense. Right. <laughs> I really don't enjoy most of his work. <laughs> I haven't read anything I enjoyed so far. Actually, he did uh death stroke for a bit and that was kind of cool. Okay. I could see how that one would be good. But anyway, this next one is by Scott Koblish on art. And it's I quite think phenomenal. This is, I think this is my favorite. Yeah, I like his style too. Like he's got his own flair with like the Deadpool design. Which works. And like I think the story Deadpool. here, which is written by Jimmy Palmiotti, I think. Wait, no, the art is by John Timms. It is? For yeah. Quickie? For Quickie, yeah. Oh, fuck. Written by Jimmy Palmiotti and art by John Timms. So. Well, he's on my radar now. So. Basically, this one, Deadpool mourns another love that he had, which is like another mercenary named Anna that he used to work with. And he's like banging a bunch of chicks, but he's just thinking about Anna. And he's like, man, I'm having such good luck with women lately. Like even the person delivering my groceries, she wants to get naked or whatever. Mm-hmm. And But she's thinking about Anna and he had to kill her because she betrayed him. And she was like, you won't shoot me. And then he did. And so he's like, but I feel pretty bad about it. But anyways, he gets called gets a call from anna to say that she's in vegas and that she wants to meet and so he meets there and then they fuck and after they fuck he's like you should marry me and then they get married because there's like officiants like in the closet that were hired to say that the whole time <laughs> which i think is really funny and they're like oh my god they're like are you guys okay and they're like no no definitely not which i think is a good joke and then anna ditches him and then it actually turns out that it's vanessa from one of the ones before or uh, yeah something like that Something that I thought was fun is that when she was like naked waiting for him in Vegas, th- there's like these speech bubbles that like just covered up her boobs. Yeah, that was pretty good. Was pretty like, good. Ah, good, good lettering. <laughs> yeah. This, not my favorite scarring here. It seems a little lazy. It's just a bunch of circles. Yeah. It's just normal body, but like with some circles colored onto it. Yeah. I like that he keeps his mask on for sex. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that's kind of funny. Deadpool design though, pretty good just because he has like his own flair with it yeah he's like fucking huge yeah he's ginormous and uh pretty good story overall and this one i think had some of the better jokes of all these yeah like with all of them they like try but a lot of them don't land and i think that's just the nature of a deadpool book most of the time because he has to be like jokey oh uh, you know what, the time. this one was the one that i liked was like so she shot her because she betrayed him yeah but apparently i guess the with the surgery and she, he like missed her heart or whatever she was able to survive that was the but that was the story that was given to him. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so like when he shows up in Vegas, she's like, did you miss me? He's like, well, yeah, we, or else he wouldn't be here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I that, was like, ah, that's a good one. That's a good one. I like when he's talking to polar bears and he's like feeding them fish. And then one of them takes his arm and he's like, I, he's like, I still got it. And then he turns around and he's like, well, except for my left arm. Yeah. And I thought it was pretty good. Good joke. I like that he gets to Vegas by just like hanging on to landing gear yeah of the plane it's pretty good <laughs> they do like a lot with like a little i think so flights to vegas are not that expensive they're not i mean depending on where you're coming from i guess but i guess 
they know the next one so deadpool walks into a bar deadpool walks into a bar and he tells the barkeep about a woman apparently he was on a mutant mission with his wife named well this is uh this is the weapon x program wasn't it i don't know i don't know what's going on anyway um (laughs) what is it lucerne something like that uh not important yeah not important and so they're doing a thing turns out his wife is actually mystique who is also the barkeep (laughs) in this so she's two different people in this and then she's trying to get like mutant files or whatever but all deadpool wants is a divorce okay let me uh reiterate that okay so this one's by dexter soy it looks awesome it does look great i think this is one of my favorite like drawn ones for sure so how do you feel about deadpool's like inverted costume here do not like it it's kind of fun for like an early concept kind of thing it is maybe if it was long sleeve i don't like that it's short sleeve for some reason that's just the muscles does that bother you the short sleeve it's it's strange but because like how do you put that on you know you put you put like anything else nathan is that just like a really like form-fitting shirt that happens to have like a spot for his face yeah okay or maybe it's like a turtleneck with the mask separate you don't have to overthink it okay but anyway, yeah keep flashback going. to that weapon x program he has this girlfriend or whatever and she's, she, she's, she's kind of out of place she, yeah <laughs> she she is out of place and saber tooth kind of like figures like smells her and figures out that it's mystique and so she like pretends like she has to throw up and then like runs away yeah or whatever and she was there because she wanted those x-men files like you were saying yep but the bar that he walked into is in the present day it's like an empty bar where it's like this old dude like cleaning the glass or whatever a bunch of people passed out yeah and he knows that that is actually mystique and he's just at that bar to get the divorce paper signed because they had got married in the past. Yeah, there's a little hints that they give us because there's vomit in the beer that he's drinking. And she, as Lucerne, vomits to try and get away from Sabretooth, who's onto her. Uh, yeah, that, that happens. Okay. Um, but I think that definitely Deadpool knew what he was walking into. But Yeah, yeah. So that was pretty fun. I don't know. Dexter Soy is the goat, though. Oh, he's so good. Get him on more stuff. I love him. They know eulogy for a winky. So Deadpool marries someone named Outlaw who has super strength. I think that's an actual superhero. Probably. But she fucks so violently on their honeymoon that Deadpool wants out. He uh, And that's the concept. They have sex all the time, like every day. And but every time she she breaks his hips. She breaks his <laughs> hips or shatters his pelvis or and he just does not want to bang. <laughs> he just gets broken in at, half, yeah. At one point the rhino tries to fight Deadpool and he's like, Oh thank God, please kill me. <laughs> Which <laughs> he I puts think, his head like under its foot. <laughs> Which is really good. I like that their honeymoon consists of going to like just the most redneck places. Like one of them is the world's biggest indoor septic tank. Yeah. <laughs> it's like these places that like aren't very romantic, <laughs> but pretty good. The biggest ball of lard in North Dakota. Yeah, there you go. That's that's one. I thought he was just trying to find um, less and less romantic places. That could be it too. But then like it, it just doesn't pan out that well. Yeah, and she still wants to fuck. So I think I like this one a with, lot. With uh, the Deadpool design... The bigger the black part of his face is, like the better. Yeah, it's 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 definitely gonna be pretty prominent. It's just fun. It is fun. Yeah, I like when the stitching for like his whole mask like comes out from the eyes too, like it does in this one. Oh, okay. More of like I think that helps too. The movie style. Yeah. So very. It's kind of a cool rhino design too. It's a little bit more modern take, kind of. It's like rhino from like any cartoon, but he's decided to wear shoulder pads yeah <laughs> which is cool i like it all right next one there will be no honeymoon deadpool marries domino to get them into a couple's only munitions event where they're actually selling alien tech which they have to stop and so the guy running it gets killed when domino shoots through deadpool to kill him and then they get divorced mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh pretty good pretty easy yeah it seems strange that they had to get actually married to get into that group yeah you, they had to like i guess they would verify that or something which is weird yeah maybe they had to get married there or something i don't know there's a dig at arizonians not liking gay marriage <laughs> yeah because he would have married cable he would have he wanted to marry cable and then cable doesn't want that when when was this when was this published this would have was this been before gay marriage was legalized everywhere obviously yeah oh okay this is like marvel now that's like 2015 let's see or 2016 2018 
2014. Oh, the trade came out 2018, I guess. No, this is digitally released. Okay, so yeah, definitely before. Yeah, and until recently, Arizona has always been a primarily red state. Yeah, you know, so things like that had been uh, like that. So Daniel, next one, still fun. Next one, Savage Land, the other Niagara Falls one. That's what it's called. Oh, okay. Deadpool and a scientist are in the Savage Land for some reason. Hold on one second. Let's back up here. The one with uh, the super, super strength wife. Yeah. Dupe is in the crowd. I did notice that. I do love some dupe and we should read dupe. <laughs> uh, dupe is, was in this book twice as well. A lot of great cameos. When was he in it the first time? This is the first time. Oh, he's in it a second time. We'll see him again. I think maybe I just saw him in that cover. Okay. He's in the cover. I think he was in this book twice though. But I think the world needs more dupe. 100%. <laughs> so the next story, the savage land, there's Deadpool and the scientists that are in the savage land doing whatever he finds out that this scientist is single and he asks her to marry him but then she gets knocked out by like an alien flower and as she passes out she kind of lets out a noise that sounds like it can be interpreted as yes it's like yeah ah. yeah so <laughs> so deadpool's like all right let's get married <laughs> while you're passed out and so he finds a shaman in the savage land to marry them she wakes up during like the ceremony or reception whatever it's called Mm -hmm. and deadpool plays it off plays off the whole thing like what the hell's happening here you know yeah and then he like knocks out the shaman and that's pretty much it why is she dressed like that because it's hot out nathan (laughs) i guess so that's what she wanted to wear that day yeah that's she can wear whatever she wants i really like this shaman dude yeah that, that he gets because when he's like marrying them he's like do you uga take you booga <laughs> he's like doing uga booga things yeah i thought that was fun and then he like knocks him out like punches him sucker punches him to be like oh man i'm what's lucky happening I, here it's crazy i just got here too or whatever so yeah and there's a decapitated head that's really weird and i don't like it apparently that's like a, a thing in continuity i do remember that vaguely it's like a severed head or something but at one point when she gets knocked out her ass is like in there and he puts the head on her ass looks like she's biting her ass and it is definitely biting her ass and i'm like this is just well strange. it doesn't have like a bottom jaw so is it biting it or yeah. is it just resting he if he had a bottom jaw he'd be biting it <laughs> so and you could tell real quick sorry to uh no you're good backpedal here the one with uh domino where they're getting married so they're in this like convention thing. Yep. Right. And they're like, we're so happy to have all these new members, especially uh, our honeymoon couple, Wendy and William Whitebread. And then <laughs> the <laughs> captions like names are my idea, <laughs> uh, which I thought was fun. That is fun. And then there, there's like a fun bit where Deadpool's kind of explaining the situation on why they're ambushing that convention. And then, like, right under it is, like, captions from editor's notes that are basically just re-saying exactly what he just said. Yeah. Which is funny. He's like, to avoid a gnarly footnote, we think Ryan got the alien weapons during that whole maximum maximum security crossover. And then, like, captions, like, which took place during the maximum security crossover. <laughs> that Jordan. is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I like it when editor's notes get involved in the jokes. I think that's always fun. I, I Sometimes I don't even think, like, editors actually make all those notes definitely not i think, I think some of those are ri- written in yeah like the writers put them there because i doubt like jerry duggan whoever wrote it, it's like hey can you make a note you know back to this this would be put funny it in, yeah this it's not like th- th- those no. caption boxes are locked you yeah know? exactly but anyway last the last one? one of this anthology issue deadpool's married to like a big old alien and he's like we should go on a honeymoon and she's like what's a honeymoon he's like oh i'll show you or he's like actually i don't know but we'll make it up as we go along and so they go to a planet and there's a dragon there who ate a space queen and their love makes the dragon sick to his stomach and then he pukes up the space queen so everything's all good again (laughs) that's pretty much what happens Mm -hmm. Uh, which i think is pretty fun i didn't like this deadpool design because he's just like a little bit too jacked i think his his head's a little too small he looks like The Rock. <laughs> and his That's, traps are way too fucking big. Yeah, he does have some big traps here. I like his shoulder pad that he has for some yeah, reason. Yeah, that's like the... I think that's because like the the kingdom or whatever that he's working for. Oh, I see. No, he's got it in the beginning. Oh, no, he doesn't. Okay. 
but yeah, I, I agree. Oh, also, I was I said I was gonna name it when it ha- comes up. I think the Christopher Priest one doesn't have like the little the little droop on like the back of his head. Oh, uh, does it? And neither it, does it was a bad book. Neither does uh the the one where he gets fucked a lot by the ah bad book by the strong girl. Yeah, and I think those are this the only one two. doesn't either, does it? No, I think it does. No, nah, oh. dude. Look at this. I'm going to go back to the Christopher Priest one. Look, we see sure. the back of his head, dude. Oh, no. Right oh, here. A lot of these are bad design choices. Oh, no. The Christopher Priest one doesn't have it either. This is a bad book. <laughs> all of all these are bad. Mm-hmm. But this, this the Vegas worse than one. a dog dying. The, the Jimmy Palmiotti one does. Oh, that's good. good. Good, good, good. Saved. Uh, so, yeah, that's this issue. <laughs> all of those anthology books is one issue. About 100 pages. Just showing, like, all the times he got married. Which is a fun idea. I I think it is... It's not 100 pages. It was like 50 pages. Yeah, it was just but. a lot. So now we go to issue 28, which is the honeymoon. And it's Deadpool and Shikla. They're in Tokyo and they're walking around. Deadpool has a suitcase. He gets his suitcase taken by a kid. And there's some other kids that can control like big avatars, kind of like Pokemon or Digimon. like Digimons pretty much that are controlled by like iPads. And so they need to fight these like big avatar creatures uh, so that that kid can get away. And I, I actually like this idea. I like these avatar designs. Yeah, they're pretty fun. I like the monkey one. I think that one's pretty cool. And some big action pages here and stuff like that. Then the case gets taken by Crooked Cops, which then gets taken by Yakuza and then by the hand. And then they all get stopped by Sunspot before Shikla has had enough. Sunfire. Oh, is it Sunfire? Yeah. It's not Sunspot? No, Sunspot is cool. I don't know what this guy is. This is also... Is Sunspot an X-Men? Yes. Okay, this is also an X-Men. Sunspot is a cool X-Men. Is Sunspot the one that has like a supernova looking face kind of deal? Supernova looking face. <laughs> Hold on. I need, I'm mixing my X-Men, I think. He just he just shoots fire, dude. Wait, what? Sunspot's the one that shoots fire? Yeah. Is he the one in X-Men 3? You're thinking of X Men Two, which is Pyro, and no, he's also in X Men Three. He's in guaranteed. X, he's in X Men Days of Future Past. You're right. Okay, Sunfire. I don't. I. It's so dumb how I know. Okay, all Sunfire this. is a member of the X Men, though. I did get that right. Is so he's a mutant or he's, I don't know. Sunfire, he is a mutant. He's a. How does he help when he's in Tokyo? Uh, he's a Japanese mutant, so he just lives there. So Japanese X Men. Correct. X-Men does not, or mutant does not equal X-Men. Yes, it does. No, this is like the Brotherhood, or evil. Right. So, they're not X-Men, they're mutants. But Sunfire is an X-Men. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I get what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, that's why he's there. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, Shikla is like, this sucks, and so she turns into big demon, and she eats someone, and they're like, that's fucked up. You know, I kind of came in over my head here, and then they all run away. So they're chasing these kids, right? Yeah. Earlier. And Deadpool's turning a corner. He's like, that door is ominously lit. <laughs> but, uh, and then he opens it. And and it's Kill Bill. It's okay. It's the bride from Kill Bill, Nathan. The woman's name is not Kill Bill. It's not? No. She's called the bride. Why isn't it called the bride then? <laughs> the bride of Kill Bill. Because the bride has to kill Bill. Really? Yeah. That's I'm, the that's like the whole plot of the movie. I haven't seen the movie in so long. That's why. Honest. Yeah. She has to kill Bill. That's it, why it's called Kill Bill. I haven't seen this in so long that it took me a second to realize what this was. The yellow? The ye- I knew I was like yellow. <laughs> okay. That gives me a hint. <laughs> I did figure it out in my head without looking it up though. Okay. So. Okay. So I thought but, that was a fun thing that seems like it'd be hard to pull off legally. Yeah. But I think it was vague enough to where they could get away with yeah, it. Yeah. This could be like clean wing or something like that. You know? Just yeah. Some, somebody that wield swords and wear some yellow so is the hand in tokyo sure they're just everywhere they're just everywhere i Are think that not just hell's kitchen or whatever that would be weird if they were only in new york uh well the yakuza is only here yeah because they're just people <laughs> these are ninjas daniel <laughs> ninjas are just people no aren't all people ninjas are all ninjas people yeah yeah i don't know why the hand's there uh, no, the hand's definitely there because like Wolverines had to go to Japan and do some stuff and then the hand was there. <laughs> and you read that? Yeah. That's okay. like a thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's like you read that or you're just 
trying to put that together. Both. All right. Fuck. What else is going so on? So who's okay. the money for, Nathan? So the actual reason that they're there is to give the suitcase to a guy named Kim, who looks like a Nightcrawler guy. He seems pretty sick, but I guess the whole time Deadpool wanted to help him out. And it's probably something that gets elaborated on in another trade, but he's just there to give this guy money. I don't know who this is. He's probably got some relation with Nightcrawler because he bamfs. Yeah. So it must be a brother of Nightcrawler or something. I mm-hmm. don't know. There's like random iterations of Nightcrawler that appear all throughout like X-Men. Like there's bamfs. Who's the, oh yeah, those little those like, those like little guys. I don't know what they're about. What's the, who's the red one? That's his dad who's a pirate. What's his name? Uh, Jim. Oh, that's wrong. No, I don't know. Hold on. Is it like... I'm look that one up. Isn't like El Diablo or something or like Satan or the Omen or something? Azazel. 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 Nice. That Yeah, okay. Because that's like a demon. That's like a, a demon's name in like mythology. Right. Or and he's theology. an immortal mutant. That's cool. Which is which is awesome. It's a good name. And he can transport himself great distances, whereas Nightcrawler he just kind of goes short distance. Ah. Well. Dude, Jason Aaron did a really good X-Men run or trade that had a really sweet Nightcrawler story. Did it have his Azel in it? I think so. I don't give a shit. Oh, it did. It did. Okay. Yeah. It did. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, Daniel. Nathan, there's nothing more romantic than a World War II comic. Yeah. So issue 26... Keep in mind, we're going back two issues. Right. Because the so last one was before. 28. This one is 26. Is that right? Yeah. The this last one, one is we just 26. Did, this one we're about to do is 26. The last the issue before this is 28. So this is like all over the place. So is the wedding issue like a, a separate? I think that was its own one shot technically. Okay. Uh, and but then I don't also, know. But also ties into the main Deadpool storyline. Yeah. And so this one is not wedding related. Good story. But they just like throw it in here, it seems like. Dude, they're just ripping off I killed Ahoff Hitler, dude. <laughs> dude, they are. Oh my god, you're <laughs> they right. They stole this from Jason. They bit Jason. Ah. <laughs> so basically Hitler gets a time travel device and tries to kill Nick Fury in the future, because at the time Nick Fury's got his howling commandos and he's like, Man, I fucking hate that guy. Yeah. And Deadpool is there time traveling from the future, but to the past to warn Nick Fury out to help stop Hitler. But Hitler shows up in a mech suit. A couple things. I really enjoy that Hitler is just used to taking out time travelers. <laughs> <laughs> which is such a funny idea. Because He's like, oh, another one. I'm so, I, I guess I'm going to do something really bad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and like at this point, he has. Yeah, he yeah. He has done something very this bad. This is like the end of his like reign or yeah, whatever. Yeah, which like, you should know why there's time travelers. But it's, it's really funny because anytime there's like a movie or something, it's like, what would you do with time travel? Like, who would you kill or whatever? It's always kill Hitler. Yeah. And so I think it's really funny that this is a reality where people are trying to do that and he just stops them. And yeah. at this point, he's not even surprised. He's just like, oh, fuck another one. Yeah. <laughs> which is a great idea. So this has like the retro artwork, with it, which is really fun. It's really good. How do you feel about this Deadpool design? With the, the eyes specifically. With the eyes specifically. Hold on. Oh, you know, I think it's fine because it's supposed to be like a time travel story. Right. And this makes it look like he's like, what, like Zorro, I guess. I said that I, before. I don't think he's going for Zorro, but he does look like Zorro. Yeah, just some, some sort of noir. It's got like the same mask as like the Incredibles. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I'm fine with it for this story story because it, it feels like it fits. But if I saw that in another Deadpool comic, I would not read it straight up. Really? Yeah. Even if it was art by whoever did this one, Scott, Scott Koblish. I'd give it one issue. Oh, okay. See if I like it. Fair enough. But, uh, I like when he goes to the future to try and kill Nick Fury, but it's Nick Fury Jr. Who's the Samuel L. Jackson based Nick Fury. And he's like, who the fuck are you? He's like, oh, wrong room or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is very funny. Yeah. So he tries to go to the past to kill Nick Fury when he's a kid and then he gets bullied. And then he yeah. tries to go to the future to kill Nick Fury. But then it's a black Nick Fury and he's like, ah, this, this isn't right, clearly. And so then he goes just like 10 years into the future after World War II. And that's when he's deciding to kill Nick Fury. And so... Which is very complicated, I, I feel like. I guess he wasn't able to kill Nick Fury normally, so he goes to the future to get this big mech thing and then comes back. Yeah. But Deadpool and Nick Fury are losing. And so what Deadpool does is he writes a postcard <laughs> to Cable 
for the future. For the future. And they probably die in between the time that he writes it and Cable gets it. Definitely they do. So Cable comes back in time to the time when he wrote that postcard. In his own mech suit. With it that's even further in the future. <laughs> yeah. To come save them. And this is such a sick Cable design. Yeah, I think this is super fun. This is so dope. I, I, I love just unbelievably complicated tech just on his body so many pouches i i just want him to look as uncomfortable as possible because it's so cool looking you he's know? got four pouches on one arm <laughs> <laughs> he's got four pouches on his leg which is under like a hundred pouches on his waist yeah pouches just make everybody look cooler uh, definitely who's that guy that's known for pouches it's like scott labdell or something you mean um i think it is scott labdell the guy that he's like the guy that made Deadpool, right? No, no, you're thinking of um, Eric. No, not Eric. I no, I think you're right. Hold on. No, I know it's, he's he's. Oh, 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 oh! Starts with an R. First name Rob. Rob, not Guillory. Starts with an L. Last name Rob Liefeld. Rob Liefeld. Liefeld. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. So he's the guy that's known for pouches. He's even created a character called Pouchman, and it's just a guy that's just a bunch of pouches. Have you seen Pouchman? Uh, probably. Okay. Yeah. But he he was onto something. Pouches make people look cool for sure. So anyway, they stop Hitler, and then they shoot him in like a line, like a firing squad. Yeah. A bunch of times, and then they return his body back to 1945, try and stage it as a suicide. It's clearly not a suicide because he's been riddled with like a thousand bullets. He looks like Swiss cheese. Like, yeah. But then they just decide to go with the suicide story they're like, anyway. Suicide. <laughs> they're like, they're like, dude, this is clearly not a suicide. Like right? they get there and Deadpool's like, bang. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like trying to impersonate leak. Hitler in the room. He's like, I cannot take it anymore. <laughs> and it's, oh, what does I, he say? I am the saddest dictator. <laughs> I'm Hitler, Hitler killing himself, myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, well, I guess we'll just go with that narrative that he killed himself. Yeah. So it's just insanity, this issue. This is a great one shot. A hundred percent it is. Yeah. Apparently the story behind this is that this was a story that was going to be published a long time ago as well, but it was just pure like insanity and they didn't end up doing it. And then they did end up doing it for this. What's confusing about this, Nathan well, not the story, but like at the end of this, it says to be continued back in Deadpool 20. What? Yeah. What's in Deadpool 20? I don't know. De We're in 26. Why are we? We just went back to 26 from 28. Now we got to go back to 20. Next episode, guys, Deadpool <laughs> volume five. We're going to map out. We're going to have a whiteboard <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to have a, a bonus episode where we just try to map out the continuity of Jerry Dugan. Talk about the, talk about the issues that, in the order they should have came out in. Yeah. Yeah. And then realign them. All right, Daniel. Now we have the last issue. Annual number one from Deadpool. This one's drawn by Doc Shainer. It's fucking sick. It is dope. So basically, it shows the origin of how he was merged with this guy named Madcap. Mm -hmm. He's trying to kill Matt Murdock because he's too good of a lawyer and he's not. Deadpool's not getting enough business. But before he's able to do that, Thor comes in. You know, he or Madcap comes up. He talks to him a little bit and he's like, "Who the fuck are you?" Basically, Thor comes in. He zaps the both of them together. They both have a healing factor, so they're in just like this pile of dust. But then the healing factor turns them just into Deadpool. But Madcap, his mind is still in Deadpool. So yeah. that's how that happens. That's like the origin of that. So is that like explicit? Because there was like a couple years where he just always had this like... He had like the second character in his mind. And that's, that's in continuity Madcap. I, I believe so. Okay. So this, this Daniels is kind of retelling that. Correct. Okay. Well, I think it's giving it an origin. I don't know if it was explicitly said like how it happened. Okay. Gotcha. This makes sense to me. You know, I didn't like Madcap the first time I saw him, which was like in the one of the newer Deadpool runs. I don't know. He's just drawn different and just wasn't that like cool. You know, he's a little annoying. But here he's he's really fun. Yeah. Um, I like Doc Shainer's design for him. I think he's really good with like his face or like his eyes. Yeah. Also, this Deadpool design is good because it's got the little droopy thing. So and that, it's that's just good. kind of like it kind of looks like a guy cosplaying as Deadpool elaborate <laughs> like there's no like muscles on him you know okay he, sure he just got like the clothes oh you're talking but, about deadpool i thought you're talking about madcap 
No, no, Deadpool. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoy that he's trying to like kill Matt Murdock, and then there's just like a bunch of like Marvel superheroes in the way, because it would be like that if you're in New York and there's a Fantastic Four, a Spider Man, the X Men, Doctor Strange, like all these people, it's it's gonna be crowded. So yeah. I like that. That's how they decide to like represent this New York. I think it's pretty funny. So then after like. You know, their their minds got merged or whatever. He tries a little bit later to kill Matt Murdock again. Hold on. Did you see Hit Monkey? Oh, that's where he is again. There he is. Oh, I love seeing Hit Monkey and stuff. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Yeah. Okay, just, I saw him both times. You saw it. You just chose, chose to ignore it. I didn't ignore it. I, I do remember. So he tries to kill Matt Murdock again. This time he gets stopped by Luke Cage and they start to have a fight a little bit. It's not going very well because he's indestructible, obviously. Unbreakable unbreakable yes sorry then madcap starts to get angry like within them they start to like fight internally and then thor comes in and then madcap's like you're thinking what i'm thinking which i don't know how he would have thought this but basically madcap is thinking to the right side of his body deadpool is thinking to the other side of the body and then he has both luke cage and thor in like a like a mind trap thing. So he's like controlling them and he has them play tug of war, Deadpool's body. And then when the healing factor comes into play, they're both just separate people again. Mm-hmm. They, he gets ripped in half and then it heals as two yeah. separate people again. Yeah. So Madcap heals as one and then Deadpool's the other. So there's no more Madcap in his mind and Deadpool's pretty sad about that. And that's pretty much how this goes. Cause he, cause he was alone. Yeah. Cause he feels alone. He couldn't think of any, any quips or anything like that. There's a lot of really cool design pages up to this point, though. Like, I like seeing Madcap in, like, a white silhouette sort of in his mind. And, like, that's, like, the representation of, like, his caption. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. That that part's super, like, clever, too. Yeah, that's really fun. It's really ballsy to have, like, this be a splash page as well, where it's yeah. just, like, a white page with a Madcap face. Yeah. I did enjoy it. There was something really fun that was really small in this. Like, Luke Cage, like, punches Deadpool in the face and, like, indents his face but he just like keeps talking and like <laughs> keeps fighting with that indent in his face yeah and it's very funny to me. I, I think this whole like luke cage deadpool interaction is super fun because there's that page where he's like trying all sorts of different ways to try and hurt luke cage and he's just like standing there yeah i think that's fun there's a point where he throws ninjas at luke cage because nothing's working <laughs> yeah. and then madcap's like you know the plural of ninjas is ninja right and then Luke Cage is like, stop throwing ninja at me. And he's like, see? Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty good too. So very fun overall. Luke Cage dances at some point when Madcap takes over his mind. So that's pretty fun too. But overall, nice way to end this trade. That's supposed to be a wild wedding. Uh, yeah, I forgot that we were talking about a wedding <laughs> comic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and take it to the back matter. Yeah. Back matter matters. So it's that ginormous page of 236 characters. Although I can't find the one that's labeled as 236. That's supposed to be Puck. Do you know who Puck is? Is it a hockey puck? No, it's not a hockey puck. It's Puck from AIM. Which, no. There's like a Canadian space superhero team and Puck is a part of that. But I can't find where 236 is. But Puck is like the short guy. So I don't know where he's at. But it, anyway. It's see, like, they're lying, dude. Uh, but basically, it's just the the process of getting this ginormous cover put together, uh, which I think is really cool. And I like that they have the numberings. Yeah, just to, to prove it to me, even yeah, though I still that, don't believe them. That it's true. Okay, and then we have two additional covers. There's one by Mark Brooks, which is like the, the California-like greeting sign, but it's greetings from Deadpool. I think that's done pretty well. And then another variant, and that's pretty much it. So a small back matter. Yeah, I mean, they have you know variants in between the issues as well yeah they do so anyway then what would you write this comic book you know nathan th- we got to think about this if i was just reading deadpool you know as it's coming out back in 2014 a year before i started reading comics i would be pretty <laughs> happy with this you know there was there's some good stuff in it and there's uh fun one shots which are always a good time yeah so i, I can give it a little bit more than the like i'm going to go ahead and Give it like two slices of wedding cake. <laughs> okay, nice. More specifically, my wedding cake, where each tier is a different flavor. Right. So I'd say one being like the churro flavor, and then one being like the 
double chocolate flavor. If you love it so much, why don't you marry it? Uh, Just trade. Can't. Oh, the trade? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't like it that much. Yeah, so I think that's so pretty out of, good. Out I was of my also, wedding cake, what, what, what would you give it? I was going to give it like a one, two, or three tiered wedding cake. <laughs> Mine's four. Holy shit, is it really? Yeah. That's so exciting. It's because of like how many people are going. I guess like the more people that go, you just they just upgrade the cake. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, I would give it a a two tiered wedding cake. A whole cake? Because there's only two issues that are wedding issues, pretty I said, much. <laughs> <laughs> I said slices, Nathan. So uh, two, for, so you would eat Okay, but two, you you two-tiered. decided to rate it in terms of slices, which is fine. I think as a whole, just a two tiered wedding cake. You know, okay. Because if you go to a wedding, you see two tiered wedding cake. It's not like you're like, wow, look at that. You know, you're lucky if you get a bite. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> better be a small ass wedding. Okay, so that's what I rate it. Gotcha, gotcha. The wedding parts, fun, delicious, even. Yeah. Everything outside the cake, a little bit more fun. You know what? It, it's <laughs> the perfect representation of a wedding because you know the first like thirty minutes is all about like the couple and the ceremony and all normal wedding things and after that that's the fun that's shit. the party yeah it's so much of weird shit that's when hitler gets involved <laughs> <laughs> so, uh yeah anyway uh yeah good so time good time so let's go into the poll list colin shove it in your box the poll list the poll list what did you shove in your box i feel so much better with that title of the segment because i actually have a box now yeah i know it feels good it's been a, a while yeah like a year or two did saga come out today saga 62 came out today nathan okay yeah that's one of the ones in my box good we got world's finest number 12 yep we got um i'm gonna be getting a uh, blue book by james tinian and michael avon, avon oming Yes, I'm very excited about that. So that looks cool. There's a backup story by a different artist as well. Nice. And then, like I was saying earlier, the the last days of Black Hammer trade, mm-hmm. um, that comes out today. I also picked up Once Upon a Time at the End of the World, number four. Ooh, okay. And Doctor Strange, number four. Oh, true. I got to write that down. Yeah. So those are the ones that I picked up. Nice, nice. Did you read anything? Uh, no, <laughs> I did not. Wow. We didn't even have a big book this week, Nathan. I know we didn't. I just didn't plan my time very well. Yeah. So I read Nemesis Reloaded number two. Okay, nice. Uh, get a little bit of origins about uh, old Nemesis, which is okay, I guess. Okay. And I also got all caught up on 8 Billion Genies. Oh, nice. What is that on? Is it on seven? It's on seven. And I think I bought that like a week or two ago. Okay. I think I've read up to six. I want to say it felt like there was a big gap between six and seven though. So I'm not sure. You know, there's a big gap between four and five because I, it was like three months that was I didn't it really No, that I went from reading. Oh, it. oh so I see. I read number four, like three months ago and then read five, six or five, six and seven today. Okay. So I guess spoilers for that book. What is the issue when they play to try and get a part of the big cloud city? Six. That's six? Yeah. Okay. That's the last one I read. Okay. Which is a great issue. Yeah. Seven got me all fucked up, dude. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited then. Eight decades, dude. That's like a lot of times passing. Yeah. And so the, the, the last one would be first eight centuries or whatever. And so. Just whoever's old. Whoever asks for immortality or Yeah, whatever. which makes sense. And so we'll see how that goes and that'll be the end of it. Very solid. Very solid. Oh, yeah. I, I like, I just haven't made time for it, but I was like, I need to catch up on this because yeah. I want to be able to read it when it comes out, you know? Yeah, that's one of the priority books for me. Definitely. Did you watch anything new, Nathan? I watched the physical 100. Oh, did the you finish 100 it? 100 physical. No, I'm not caught up, but that is something that I've been watching this week. So when we watched it like this past weekend, yeah, and I thought that's like as much as the show that was out, no, but it like ended this week or something. Oh, it did. Interesting. And so Sarah watched like the last episode, and I was watching it with her. Okay, uh, kind of. I was, so there's I was reading it. The there's one winner, right? One winner, yeah. Okay. So the idea of the show is it's based in Korea, and there's a bunch of South. Korean athletes and um, Dennis or whatever his name is. From the Arizona Diamondbacks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for some reason. But they're like very athletic people and they're doing cha- athletic challenges and there's going to be one person that wins, basically. And it is such good reality TV <laughs> for some yeah. reason. 
Like, I don't really care about reality TV, reality TV that much. But something about this, it's, it's just like they they create like the storylines very well. I think. Yeah, you just learn what people are about. Yeah. And I think a majority of it is like just trying to pick who's going to win a challenge and also like st- trying to strategize with yourself and thinking if you could do that. I know. You know. And it's so fun to do that. And then when people pick like like the super big guys, like they're like strong, but they're like big. They're like yeah. world's strongest man like type big. So yeah. they're not like super cut, you know. And I always think that those matchups are interesting. Yeah. When there's one of the ones there. That That's one where they like have to carry sand across the bridge that they build. Uh, I love I, that one. I saw like it's a real quick clip of that. That's one of my that, favorite I missed that whole episode. Yeah. But uh, good show. i very uh, drawn to it. Good show. I played a couple new games. Uh, I started High on Life. Have you heard of that? No. So it's a game that's made by the people that... Or it's made by like Justin Roiland, kind of. Or at least oh, he's the voice of a gun in the game. Right, right, right. And I think it's his video game studio. I think it's called Squanch Games. I could be wrong about that, though. That sounds like something he would own. Yeah. Very fun so far. Hmm. The idea is that you're just like a kid and your parents go off on vacation somewhere getting, you know, babys- babysat by your older sister. And then there's an alien invasion that happens. And you mm-hmm. see an alien get shot and killed. And then you like pick up his gun and it like talks to you. And you're like, okay, we need to go like on this adventure because we need to stop this guy from taking over the world, right? Mm-hmm. And it's very fun because the the gun like talks to you and that sets up like a lot of really funny situations. And it just sounds like Morty, right? Uh, he sounds like Morty, yeah. But you'd think that would get old after a while, but I think they were really strategic about having that not get old. Sure. Um, which I was worried about. You still have to kind of enjoy like Rick and Morty humor kind of in order yeah. to do it. But there's like really fun things that they do with the game. Nice. Like at the beginning, I paused it because Sophia needed something and then I unpaused it and they're like, what the fuck are you doing pausing the game right now? There's a bunch of people <laughs> who are trying to shoot, right? And so I thought that was pretty funny. And there's a point where it's like trying to teach you how to play the game and it's like, okay, now you need to double jump. And then you go and you tap A and you try and tap A again to double jump and they're like, oh fuck, I forgot we didn't code double jump into this game. So we need, <laughs> I need you to crouch through this thing instead. Okay. So that's so, some good stuff in there. Yeah. They're, they're, they're very good with like doing video game jokes rather than just like TV show jokes. Yeah. And another joke because i'm pretty early on in the game but there's like an alien that's really annoying and he's like a kid and so he's just like talking to you about how he's super cool and like can do scooter tricks or something like that nice and sounds cool i was like listening to him and i was like aiming i tried to hit like the the aim down sight button Mm -hmm. but it wouldn't let me and he's like what are you doing you're gonna shoot a kid you're gonna (laughs) shoot a kid right now no we're, we're not gonna be able to keep our our um or M rating or whatever it is. Because like you can't just do that in video games. And then it still lets you shoot the kid. Because I had to try then. And then later on, like <laughs> you like meet his mom. And they're like, oh man, that kid had what was going to him. I mean, technically he's like 30 years old. Because that's how we age in, in, in Aliens. So that was basically like them walking around like shooting a kid. Because it was an alien that was actually 30 years old. Uh, so I thought that was pretty funny. It's funny. But pretty fun so far. Cool. I also was forced to play a game called Divinity 2 okay uh because my buddy parker it was his birthday and we let him pick what game he wanted us to play wow and so generous he basically picked a game that's dungeons and dragons but it's like a video game like story that's like already sort of fleshed out and so anytime you're in like battle you have to like you, it's like turn-based and stuff like that and there's like a narrative after you battle and stuff like that i don't know sounds boring it was actually somewhat fun because of how bad we were at playing the game. Ah, uh, okay. And I picked a character that's like a skeleton. And one of my moves that I can do is that I could just play dead. Nice. <laughs> so we'd be in the middle of a big fight and then I would just play dead and be like, you know what? You guys got this. <laughs> and I thought that that was fun. Okay. But didn't like the game very much. Not my kind of game. Mm. But yeah, that's what I did this this week. What'd you, what'd you read? What'd you watch? Uh, I watched a movie called Gerald's Game. Have you ever heard of that? No. It's like a Stephen King book, mm. and it's got a Carla Gugino in it, and it looks like it was a scary movie, but it's not really. It's just like her and her husband go go away to a cabin, Nathan, and that's he, always scary. It, it turns out that he's got this really weird rape fantasy thing, mm. and so he like, you know, handcuffs her to the bed. And then she's not into it. And so they start arguing. He has like a heart attack. 
oh. and, and falls off the bed and then like cracks his head and his head starts like bleeding. Yikes. And she's just like stuck up there. Hmm. And so it's mostly just all this like psychological thriller kind of stuff where she's like talking to like herself and then almost like a the memory of like her husband kind of thing. And she's just kind of playing through like all the different ways that she can like get out of it. But she, it ends with her just with a degloving scene. Oh, gross. And so that was awesome. That was so terrible. I, I like it was so it looks so good, but I hated it, you know? Oh, okay. And it was so bad. And like, oh, oh, God. And yeah, it was okay. Don't watch it. But <laughs> just like <laughs> but that Google scene. that scene if you want. That's yeah. like the best that, part of it. That sounds like it'd be tough to watch. And there's this, it, what was weird about it is like, it could just ended there, but there was like, she was hallucinating at night or whatever. And she pictured like death, which was just like a really tall, pale dude with like this box that like had like bones and stuff. And he had like a cloak or whatever. Okay. And he shows up a couple times at nighttime. And what happens is like, after she gets out, she's fine. Got some hand wrap, perhaps. Her, yeah, her hands back. She, it takes a long time for her to recover, or whatever. And then she sees like death in the news, and it turns out that there's just some guy who was wandering around the area and would break into people's homes and like mangle them while they were like sleeping and stuff. Hmm. And he had just like a some deformity and like some mental issues and stuff like that. But it turned out that he was just like a real person that was like actually in her room when she was locked up. What a strange and pointless twist. Yeah, exactly. It, it kind of played out to where it like made sense like a little, but it just didn't need to be in there. Yeah. It was so weird. But anyway, it, it, was, it was way too long for someone to be chained to a bed and for me to be watching that. Yeah. It was like an hour and 40 minutes. Well, that's a long time. Yeah, maybe a 30 minute movie. Would Reminds be me of the movie Buried. Yeah, I, I didn't watch that, but similar. Probably okay. really, really small budget. I remember enjoying that movie, though. So Okay. And then I also watched The Last of Us. Nathan, did you watch it? No. Dude, you were this guy I who was this watched guy. it like I the understand. minute it came out. Literally every single day this week, I haven't been able to watch it with Sophia. I debated watching without her even. Because <laughs> oh, so, yeah, you had your, your super romantic picnic yeah, I did on do Sunday. A, a picnic. She had to go to bed right after. There's a bunch of it, like things that happened that prevented us from being able to watch it so is it good great episode okay it's like up there really like top three episode maybe wow because it feels like they not go, counting the first one it feels like they go big episode you know smaller episode big episode smaller episode no not quite and the last one i feel like was pretty big after big episode yeah this one that happened there with henry equally as big episode wow because was that episode six now six yeah so then and it's going to be 10 total. So I think Is maybe like one more filler kind of episode, but then the rest. Important. Yeah. And none of them to me feel like filler. It's just like, this is episode four was filler. You think so? Yeah. Well, like not like definitively, but like that one is, feels like the most like, well, it's like we're driving, we know we're having some fun and then they like the car gets taken out. It's a pretty big plot point. Cause like he was just trying to get a car for like the first four episodes. I feel like they, Three all episodes. the episodes were too long and they needed to shave them down. And that's what that episode was, was just the shavings, which is fine. Yeah. But yeah there's yeah. still some big stuff that happened. It's still a good episode, but compared to the rest falls short. I agree. And yes. it's very short. So, and I agree with that too, but glad to hear that one's good. Yeah. But Nathan, we watched Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Qu Quantumania. Quantumania. <laughs> and... I think what everyone needs to like remember is that if you told me that like 10 years ago that there's going to be an Ant-Man movie, well, not just an Ant-Man movie, three Ant-Man movies, I would say you're a liar. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And if this came out 15 years ago... It'd be the best fucking movie of all best time. Best fucking movie ever. <laughs> yeah. I had a great time with this. I thought it was a lot of fun. Apparently, it's like the second worst rated uh, MCU movie on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, I think that does a little bit dirty. And it seems to be like the overall opinion on it is that it's not very good. Yeah, which I also find to be a bit strange. I think people are just, I don't know. It's weird because they want every single movie to be like 
getting better, 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 right? Yeah. yeah. And I don't think that this is like as good as Endgame, obviously, but I still, I, I, I still really like the movie. I as didn't well. want it to be like an Endgame. Yeah, you know I don't. I, mean? I don't want that either. That's exactly. too much. And I think what people don't realize about the whole phase, what was this four? This ended like phase four or started phase five or something. Five. They're just taking big swings, and I love to see it. I don't yeah. want more Iron Man. You know, like Iron Man esque like stories where it's like. You know what I mean? Like yeah. th- this is a big swing. Definitely. Because there's some weird shit that happens. I want to see Modoc. And I know? I I know. There's Modoc in this. That's the uh, things I like to see. <laughs> More unlikely than getting three Ant Man movies like fifteen years ago is like, hey, Modoc is in live action, you know? At all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is crazy. And you see his ass, which is great. That was hilarious. That was, <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I, I enjoyed it as well. Just gotta be thankful for these movies in general, there's, you know? You know, there are some criticisms of the movie where I'm like, you know what? That's valid, I guess. But it's all stuff that, like, I don't really mind that much. Overall, I enjoyed it. I think the action is pretty good. It did feel very green screeny, obviously. Because well, yeah, it kind of has to because it's, you're in the quantum realm. Not going to do practical effects There's not with a that. whole lot of sets that you can do, I guess. It just, for some reason, doesn't feel that expansive. It's a fake place, you know? Yeah, it, it is. It is. But it was cool that, like, there's this place that was pretty underdiscovered other than what janet you know, janet went through michelle pfeiffer and she never really talked about and so i think it was pretty much a matter of time before something like this would happen so when scott got shot into the quantum realm he like and from his perspective he immediately came back kind of right what do you mean because in end game the rat like goes in the van and then touches the thing and then he comes back well i think he was in it for like a little it t- but to him it's not like what Janet went through for like years and so years. So you're saying years. when they go back, there'll be another time jump because no, they're in it for two hours. No, no, no. I'm I'm just asking you a question. Like oh, from, I his, from Scott's perspective, it seems like I'm trying to remember. Like he was only in there for like a little bit, and then when he gets out, he's like, "Oh man, that was weird." Oh wait, I'm like 20 years in the future or whatever, or five, five. years in the future. I don't remember the specific. Okay, I think that's what it was. But yeah, it it was interesting seeing like what Janet had built for like herself and what she's been through. Mm-hmm. Uh, funny side note. I was talking with Sophia about it after to see like how she liked it and she liked it. And I was like, it was cool seeing Bill Murray in here. And she's like, who's Bill Murray? And I was like, it's the old guy, you know, when they're eating the squids or whatever. And she's like, Oh, I thought that was Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that, that shit was so funny <laughs> because like just two old white guys, you know, and I just thought that was funny. Has she seen like, she's seen movies with Tom Hanks. No pinnacle, like Bill Murray movies that like the probably, Ghostbusters. Probably. I need I you to ask. She, I don't think she's seen Ghostbusters. If I'm being completely honest with you. Oh my God. But she's seen Bill Murray movies for sure. Like Osmosis Jones, probably. Oh, true. He's in that. Garfield. Zombieland. One? Yeah. She's seen Zombieland. Okay. Because they make his name like a pretty big deal in that. Exactly, you know? yeah. Like, and I so, cannot forget Bill Murray because of that movie. Exactly. I didn't think that anybody would get Bill Murray confused with anybody, you know, yeah. in my mind. But anyway, his character is weird. I think the one criticism, if I did have a criticism, is that there were too many, like, new characters that didn't get their own chance to shine. Like, uh, you have William Jackson Harper in this, who is, gr- a, like, a really interesting seeming character. He's the guy with, like, the telekinesis. He had plenty of time, I felt like. Like, what does he do? Like, I don't know. Read you minds. get that guy, and I don't really know I don't really know much about him. Or like I think there's a couple, everything there is to know about him, we learned. It seems like he should have a bigger play if you're gonna get that guy. He talked like three times, then I, I know, but like every What do you mean that every guy? New, he was in like one show. He was in Midsummer. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Was he really? Bet me money right now. No, I've seen that movie He's once. He's the one that's trying to do his thesis on Midsummer, and then oh. Walmart Chris Pratt's like, I also want to do my thesis on this. And he's like, are you kidding me? And then they make a big deal out of it, even though I don't think it's that big of a deal. Oh, okay. I totally forgot. I, cause... And he gets killed when he tries to go look at a book. Yeah. So, I don't know. I really like that guy. I wish he was had a bigger play. But like even all the new characters, like there's that girl that leads the rebellion the rebellion right is that blaster face guy blaster face guy there's the, the david goopy, desmaltion's character goopy man the goopy guy goopy guy with no holes bill murray there's 
Kang, if you don't know him before. Yeah, I guess. There's um, Modok. Modok, yeah. Which is kind of like new character, I guess. I would consider new character. Yeah. I like how that was the origin of Modok too. And it just like made, when he gets fucked up in the corner realm, like his arm does get small. And they made it make a lot of sense. I know. And I was very surprised by that. And I'm like, did they plan this? Because <laughs> no it way. makes too much sense. There's no way that they planned it. It just happened to work out, I okay, think. Maybe. There's no way that writing Ant-Man 1, they're like, how do we kill this guy? Can you we know, reuse him later? Can we potentially use him as Modoc later? You know, there's yeah. no way that that happened. Probably not. And I think it's just but. good that they made it work. People were angry that he's his face was not fucked up, and I think that's stupid because no one cares about Modoc that much. His you face know? isn't wet. Like Modoc's face is pretty like mutilated. It, yeah, it seems like some people on Twitter, granted, because Twitter people are stupid, but I, I liked the design. Yeah, I think they did the best with making him <laughs> modok look like modok yeah. and he has a couple really good like scenes i guess they could have just made it like that actor's head with the little arms and not have it all stretched out or whatever and that would have maybe done the same had the same effect oh instead of like a stretched out head yeah no i, I like how they did it okay yeah i'm totally fine with it too it mm-hmm. was cool he was just like fun like overall the mm-hmm. fact that he's in it he had like a part that made sense yeah I and then so. i like that no one really like died in this we were expecting like a death like a scott or hank or something like that oh, i wasn't we talked about it but oh we did okay i'm glad that it was like modok because we don't need to see him again we and he we thought he was dead before so i do think that there should have been more like stakes not stakes they could have all died like i think there should have been i don't know a, a lasting some sort of lasting effect and it, it seemed like for a little bit it was going to be like Scott and Hope getting stuck in the quantum realm. But then they're like, oh, we'll just make another portal. And then they get out, you know? Well, th- they needed to do something to make the portal, right? Yeah. I mean, they just sensed they used Cassie's fucking thing. What? What's going on with Cassie, by the way? <laughs> yeah. Wasn't she older? Why is she younger now? No, I don't think she's. I think she's. She was older because Scott goes to his house and. Cassie has his house. She wasn't is, older in that than the actor is now. 100% she is. 1,000% no. Oh, my God. Oh my I'm God. looking those up. You want to bet? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> what do you want to bet? Uh, 10 bucks. Uh, okay. So, what are you looking up? Cassie Lang in Endgame. Okay. What's that actor and how, how old was she in that? On the right is Cassie Lang in Endgame. Okay. Let's think about this. Right, and on quick. the left is Cassie Lang in Ant-Man. And why is that? Why? What happened there? All right, we're doing this again. Okay. Thank so, God. Actually, it's kind of a blessing that that stuff got cut out because we were just confused about Cassie. I'm oh. just dumb. Apparently, she got recast and she's the same age as in Endgame. Yeah, she, she's supposed to be. The actor is like 25. Right. But the actor was like 18 in Endgame. Yeah. She does look older, though. I'll give you that. Yeah. Than the current one. Okay. Well, then that is better in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, I think just like... I don't know. Pretty they didn't good. Call her, th- they didn't call her Stinger, and that's what I'm mad about. That, I'm also <laughs> mad about that. They, they, maybe they should like try to workshop some names, and then they couldn't figure something out, and then they go with the Stinger. Because it's like, what do you call her? I do uh, like that moment when they're both big, yeah, in the quantum realm, and then they're, it's just two people talking with little stuff around them, with little stuff around them, but also their voices are kind of like big. They're uh, in big mode. Yeah, that's a like, good. Oh my that's god, good. you're so big. <laughs> you know, I thought that was just fun, dude. What was with this? like hank driving this like pocket pussy ship i liked that that was felt there good. wasn't as much hank stuff in here if you're alone in that ship you stick your dick in there right 100 <laughs> percent. drive then, the ship with your dick and then you're doing donuts <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly yeah i thought that was interesting i know they, they had some good like space sci-fi stuff uh, yeah i this. i liked all the all the creatures that were in this they all looked weird some buildings look, were look, creatures and they're like yeah. your, your buildings are dead I yeah that was a good joke <laughs> Uh, a lot, of, a lot of good stuff, but Jonathan Majors definitely just like stole the show as he's, Kang. He's great. He was an absolute madman. I think he was like a variant of the one that was in Loki because the one in Loki had like kind of a Joker feel to him. He was yeah. much happier. I think his whole deal is very confusing, and I'm not gonna understand it fully ever. I think right now, the 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 one that's like in charge was the one in Loki right now. Was okay. the one that in Loki. He was not the one that was exiled. Right. The one that was exiled was the one we got. The one we got. And he's dead for sure. 
Not, maybe. maybe not for sure. Yeah, he was just sucked into his little like battery he, thing. He was just sucked in. Yeah, it's maybe possible he's, even, he's alive. Maybe he's even better. But you know, at least that gives us someone that's like dead. You know, that's a villain that was overcome. Because I yeah. was very scared that it's just like he gets away, and we don't really know that he's dead. I, I thought he would because the, the ants like take him away. These super smart ants. And so I just thought that was that, and they go back home, and yeah, then but that, that would have been bad. They didn't actually kill him, kind of thing. Yeah, that would have been bad. Not like he got away though, you know. Yeah, and so there's a bunch of kings, and they're all are they all bad? Probably. Yeah, I I just don't know what's going on with all well, the kings. At least yet. like the the big three one that came out in the after credit scene, they look like bad. One's just up as a pharaoh. Well, yeah. Egyptians are bad, Daniel. Pretty bad. Pharaohs are bad. <laughs> Pharaohs probably they, are bad. They yeah. built the pyramids with slaves with and slavery. aliens. Yeah, never good. Never good. And so, I think they have enough like sway or like pull to make all the other kings kind of fit their agenda or yeah. whatever. So. I like that all the different kings have their own like little little personalities. Yeah, <laughs> like there's one's a little quirky, one's a little, little, one, one's one's a little whispery, you know. One, one's a little hype, you know. Yeah, exactly. One's an alien. How does that work? One, you know? One's a baker, you know. One li- one likes to read poems. Maybe one works at Baskin Robbins. One likes long wa- locks on the beach. Mm-hmm. One's got a big gambling problem. We're gonna see him in Vegas. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I I don't know it that was stuff that just confused me or I was trying, I was focusing really hard to try and figure out what was going on the whole time. I had to listen to other podcasts to kind of piece yeah. it together. <laughs> so that's the only, that's also criticism is that like his whole deal is not very clear. I don't think. I don't think it's supposed the movie. to be there. Uh, then that's bad. <laughs> it's, no, it's like they're going to definitely let him shine like in the Kang dynasty stuff. Yeah. But they did have to show that this variant was in here and just kind of giving us like a taste of what this dude's like. Yeah, sure. He kind of, he was like scary as far as like his like abilities too, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When he's beating up Scott Lang. Dude, that he just went full Creed 3 on him. Man. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's like he thought he was trying to do Creed 3. <laughs> yeah. Because he you was choreography fucking him mixed up. up. Yeah. yeah. Which was, which is super fun. Did you see all the comparisons to like Spy Kids 3D to this movie? Yeah. Which is valid. Very valid. It's very funny. Yeah. It does. It does feel like that. Because it's like too big of a coincidence you know not <laughs> yeah. they're not like saying positioned that, all the same i'm not saying of. that like jeff loveness like stole any of this no but there's no way he would have known if that would have happened because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's just writing it or maybe spy kids stole from marvel that's what happened exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah but. there is a lot because there's like the sylvester stallone in that movie is just like a bunch of variants yeah and, and then, then there's and then george, is a bunch of george variants. lopez on that screen his face is like stretched out oh and like modok looks like modok no isn't that shark boy and lava girl no, man, I don't know. I can't remember. I think it is. Same same vibe. Yeah, yeah. What else? What else? What else? I feel like for a movie called Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, there's not that much of the Wasp going on. I Yeah, there's definitely less, but I think because it got separated. But there, also, there are, Janet there was, is the Wasp, so... Right, so... I think that counts. It's They're not going to call it like uh, Ant-Man and then the old Ant-Man and Wasp and the old Wasp, you know? It's like both. I want Ant-Man and the old Wasp It's not a title. It's an ideal, Nathan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Uh, I do like all the Janet Van Dyne stuff. Like, she clearly had to make some decisions. She's fucking people because she knows she's going to come back. I honestly didn't really care for her that much because they didn't really, like, develop her that much in, like, the last movie, I felt like. Also, it's been a long time it's since I watched this, that movie. It's because she comes up at the end. Yeah, the right. Movie. And so it was really... I, and so I, this I, movie's for her. Yeah, which is perfect. Yeah. Okay, good. We agree. We agree. <laughs> uh, so I thought it was that was cool. And also, I, I just kept... I, I, like, forgot that Hope Van Dyne was, like, her name. I forgot her name was Hope. Oh, really? Just because I don't, like, know these characters well. I know mm-hmm. Janet, though. And it was cool to see, like, Janet in this universe, you know? Because mm-hmm. I know her pretty well from the Ant-Man book we read. You know? I would like to see her in a wasp thing, but... Oh, well. Like a wasp suit? Yeah. Maybe in the future, because they're all alive and everything's fine. Yeah, it was kind of funny at the end of Ant Man. He's like, "We stopped him, right? Everything's gonna be oh, yeah. fine." And he's like, "Everything's gonna be fine." He's <laughs> like, "Yeah," and he's like, "Well, technically, they exiled him because he's like really bad or something, right?" And so, like, do we, <laughs> do we just let, let him out? Free? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like that's because that's what like, everybody would be like. Everybody's like, "No, that's what we're thinking in the theater." Because we're like, they just announced Kang Dynasty. What do you mean? Yeah, everything's not fine. But he's like is everything fine so he's got that <laughs> it, it was just kind of fun that they had that mm-hmm. but overall, overall movie, pretty solid 
I liked it. Had fun. I liked it more than Thor: Love and Thunder. Uh, so that's good. Um, I, it's no, amazing I, to me that you're even thinking. No, about I like this. Thor more. Wow, that's like infinitely not infinitely that, uh, infinitely okay. better <laughs> than Ant Man. Thor: Love and Thunder. Daniel says <laughs> it's like a step. It's like a step high. A whole step. I just like <laughs> uh, gore, and I liked. I like I, I gore just liked too. The, I I liked the the Jane. You don't even know her name. Uh, Jane Foster. Jane Foster. I was like, Harper? <laughs> no, Jane Foster was sick. Yeah. And I just like that movie more. And Disagree. You, and you're just cynical. Anyway, what are we reading next week, Nathan? What are we going to read next week? Uh, What are we reading next week, Daniel? It's a DC week. It's it's we're We're in a bit of a bind here, Nathan. Okay. So... Which we don't have to theme it after something. We could just pick no, a DC we sure book. <laughs> we sure don't. So this one will come out on the 3rd and our next episode will come on the 10th. And then the following we do a Shazam book for Shazam coming out that weekend. Oh, okay. But the same weekend Essex County comes out, but we won't be able to watch Essex County. We're doing Shazam. Unless we get a VPN. Okay. So that weekend we're doing Shazam specifically. Not doing Essex County after is what you're saying? We can. We can. Yeah, I don't care. It's kind of long. Have you uh, read Essex, Essex County? No. So what I'm saying is if we wanted to do both of those prior to them coming out, next week we would do Shazam then. We can do Shazam. Yeah. Wait. So then that episode comes out the week before Shazam comes out? Ooh, Kamasaji Unlimited. So this episode would come out a week. The Shazam episode would come out a week before Shazam comes out. Shazam rather than the same day. Comes okay, out. fuck it. Let's do that. We'll do Shazam by Jeff Holy Smith. Holy shit. Essex County is 500 pages. We're not reading that. Yikes. Anyway. No, thank so, you. Okay. So what do you want to do this week? Shazam. Now, no, we, you want to do, you want it to come out a week early? That sounds fine to me. Okay. But what then you, after that, Nathan, we're going to be reading the John Wick comic. Did John Wick 4 come out already? Yeah. On wow. the 23rd. That's crazy. Let's just do Shazam early. Okay. Shazam by Jeff Smith. All righty. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks, Nathan, for doing that trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was something else. You got to pick this one. So, you know. I guess. <laughs> podcasts are about giving and, and receiving, you know. What are you talking about right now? I'm so tired. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Let's put Daniel to bed. It's a different podcast. He's very old. It's a new podcast. And, and uh, it's time to go to bed. Follow us. We have a, li- <laughs> we have a link tree. Uh, you can follow, like, subscribe. You can email us at tradewayspod at gmail.com. Tell us what to read because apparently we don't know. Apparently, we, I mean, we have ideas and we just don't like any of them. <laughs> so give us a DC book. We don't want to read anything. We'll, we'll read a DC book. I think I just like being forced to read things. Be like, oh, we got to read this because this comes out. Oh, uh, we have, and it's a job, Daniel. It's a We're job. We're clocking in the, the podcast. <laughs> it's it's full time. I'm around the clock. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go edit this All right, bye. right after. Uh, goodbye.